Quintus Fabius Maximus Gerges, Consul 292, 276, and possibly 265 BCE. As the son of Quintus Fabius Maximus Rullianus, who was a former dictator, censor, and five-time consul, the young Quintus Fabius Maximus had big sandals to fill. Based on the dates of his known offices, this Fabius was probably born between 330 and 325 BCE. Interestingly, and in contrast to his father and most other famous Romans, Fabius earned his agnomen Gerges the glutton for his indulgent behavior as a young man prior to his entry into public life. The exact nature of the luxuries that he enjoyed can only be guessed at, as our knowledge of the Roman elite high life comes from later centuries. At any rate, the name stuck even after Fabius Gerges abandoned his youthful indiscretion and began to comport himself in a more stern, austere manner once the 290s arrived and he reached office-holding age. We first hear of Fabius Gerges entering public life in 295 when he held the office of Curul Aedile. In this position, he tried to distance himself from his earlier reputation as a party boy by imposing fines on wealthy Roman women who had engaged in adultery. Fabius then took the revenue that these fines generated and constructed a temple of Venus near the Circus Maximus. In 292, Fabius Gerges was elected consul along with Decimus Junius Brutus Scaeva. The Third Samnite War was still raging at the time, and Fabius was assigned the campaign against the Pentri, one of the most important Samnite tribes. Initially, Fabius was badly defeated, and there were cries from the traditional enemies of the Fabii in the Senate to remove Gerges from office and strip him of his rank. However, following family tradition, the elderly Fabius Rullianus stood up for his son and offered to serve as a legate on a renewed campaign under Gerges' leadership. Fabius Gerges, with an unknown amount of help and advice from his famous father, was able to redeem himself by defeating the Pentry and finally capturing the chief Samnite leader, Pontius. For these great achievements, Fabius Gerges was awarded a triumph, and his father rode beside him on this momentous occasion. For both father and son, this triumph must have been a defining moment, particularly since Fabius Rullianus died soon thereafter with the family's prestige and glory at an all-time high. Fabius Gerges continued on as a commander against the Samnites in 291 as proconsul until he was relieved by the arrival of the year's consul. We don't hear from him again until he was elected consul for the second time in 276. In 276, Fabius Gerges was elected consul along with Gaius Ganucius Clepsina. At the time, Rome was suffering from both a disease outbreak and a revolt in South Italy. Fabius headed an army that went south to confront a coalition of Samnites, the Lucani, and the Brutians. The details of this campaign are unknown, but Fabius Gerges performed well enough to earn himself a second triumph. In 273, Fabius served as the senior member of a three-senator delegation to Ptolemy II Philadelphus of Egypt. Ptolemy loaded the three senators down with gifts to take home, and Fabius and his fellow envoys decided to donate their presents to the Roman treasury. The Senate, however, decided to let them keep the gifts because they trusted and respected these three men. According to tradition, Fabius Gerges was elected to the office of consul for a third and final time in 265. As consul, Fabius was sent to Volsinii, where a civil war had broken out between the aristocracy and the people. Predictably, the Romans sided with the aristocrats, and it fell to Fabius Gerges to crush the revolt and restore full control to the local elites. During the fighting, Fabius was mortally wounded and died soon thereafter. Traditionally, Fabius Gerges is the father of the famous Fabius the Delayer, who achieved everlasting fame during the Second Punic War. However, despite the clear longevity of the Fabian line, it does seem improbable that Fabius the Delayer would have still been active until his death in 203 if his father had held his first consulship nearly 90 years before. Some scholars have proposed that there was another Quintus Fabius Maximus Gerges who held the consulship of 265 and that he was the son of the Fabius Gerges we've been talking about in this video and the father of Fabius the Delayer. This reconstruction of the timeline makes a great deal more sense than the chronologically challenged traditional view, even if it makes a slightly less dramatic story 
and throws in the question the assertion that Fabius de Delayer had joined the College of Augurs the same year that his aging father had fallen in the service of Rome. However, Fabius Gerges would have been old enough to have a son of consular age by 265, and a man of consular age would be old enough to have a 15-year-old son who could join the College of Augurs. At any rate, the question is not terribly important since this possible Fabius Gerges the Younger was clearly not a major historical figure if he did, in fact, exist. <laughs>